Hello and welcome to CX Files. I'm your host, Mark Hillary. This is the first real episode of CX Files, and some of you may have been waiting for my interview with Peter Ryan. Don't worry, it's coming next week. This is just a short bonus episode that I wanted to publish here because there's been a lot of talk online this week focused on the regional trade associations that promote CX globally. This article was originally published on LinkedIn on August 14th, 2018, and is titled, Are Regional Trade Associations Stuck in the Past? Promoting a nation or region as ready for business is a complex process. Governments all over the world spend millions on marketing and public relations exercises designed to encourage companies to locate operations or partner with a local company in their region. A particularly good example is the business process outsourcing, or BPO, industry, because it's grown dramatically over the past 25 years, and regional promotion agencies have played a key role in shaping the industry. A good example is NASCOM in India. Founded in India in 1988 with a focus on information technology, or IT, this trade association soon branched out to cover BPO and all IT-related services despite many critics saying that they have recently become too self-congratulatory, it is fair to say that NASCOM research and marketing helped to drive the booming tech sector in India over the past couple of decades. The private companies are the organizations that would actually conduct the trade, but many of them would not have received the attention and respect they deserved had NASCOM not been banging the drum for India at trade shows around the world. In my years writing about the global technology and BPO industry, I've met hundreds of people representing trade associations, and many of them are earnest, well-informed, and doing a great job. But I've come across both people and organizations that are damaging their national brand through the way they conduct themselves. Without naming any names, here's a few examples of the type of conduct I've personally experienced. Insults. A trade body leader insulted me and kicked me off their trade show stand when she heard that my latest book was about outsourcing. Her assumption was that I was writing negatively about her industry, yet one single look at Amazon would have shown her that maybe I could be writing positively about her nation. That certainly didn't happen. Sales focus masked by trade body status. A major trade body morphed from providing objective information on the IT and BPO industries into little more than a sales front. It appeared to be still objective and independent, but essentially the trade promotion officers were just sourcing deals for members and earning commission. Of course the companies need to sell, but the sales team should clearly be identified and not masked by the veneer of of an independent trade association. Generic, boring presentations that give no life or color to the region. Don't forget that those of us who research BPO all the time have sat through hundreds of PowerPoints on why yours is the best country for investment. Every country has strengths and weaknesses. Now work with them. If you have a small population, then don't pretend you can scale up to have 10% of the entire population working in a contact center. Talk about the specialist skills that you really have. Most trade associations find it hard to acknowledge that their region cannot really do everything. Old promises and no action. If a trade association makes promises to influencers, such as industry analysts, then follow through. I've written about investment in several locations, then I've been contacted by the trade association who suggested they bring me over to meet companies and see the place. That's great, but if you suggest conferences or visits, then make it happen. I've got one invite now that's almost two years old. How does that make me feel about the way that nation organizes investment? Take a guess. Not paying. One national trade body hired me to research business investment opportunities in their region. Then I wasn't even paid for the research. Do you think I'll ever recommend investing in this country ever again? I've talked to CEOs who were planning to invest in this country, and my description of the way their trade body behaved has discouraged them. So that's a real effect on their GDP from poor promotional behavior. Political appointments. Trade bodies are often funded by government or a mix of business subscriptions and government support. So it's clear the government often has a view on how to promote their nation. But you need competent, business-focused people in these bodies. People who can convince a CEO to invest. If you stuff the trade body with political appointees who are not up to the job, then don't be surprised when nobody invests a dime in your region. Fighting other trade promotion bodies. Trade bodies from one region of a nation often fight others from the same nation. This used to happen all the time in India until NASCOM's got things more coordinated, but it's still happening in many other nations. 
Imagine a CEO thinking about a major investment that means thousands of jobs and one regional business leader is focused entirely on how bad another region of the country is for their company. That's a fast track to losing investment in both regions. Trade bodies fighting friends. Sometimes one trade body will fight another in the same country, perhaps for dominance of the events market, or just because one trade body leader doesn't like the way that experts and analysts are writing about research created by another body. From the outside, it looks disorganized and ridiculous. If trade bodies want to fight each other or fight the industry experts for being frank with their views, then investment can go someplace where it's more appreciated, and it will. The founder of Ryan Strategic Advisory, Peter Ryan, wrote about this problem earlier this week. Peter's article was focused on the need for governments, trade bodies, advisors, consultants, analysts to all be strategically aligned. If trade bodies and governments want to present the case for investment in a way that impresses potential investors, then they need to send the same message. If different trade bodies or advisors are all squabbling with each other, then it only sends a negative message about investment in that region. The entire IT-enabled service sector is on the cusp of an enormous and exciting change. For many years, contact center jobs have been seen as a useful boost to employment, but they've rarely been seen as exciting jobs for the people doing the work. Now, this is all about to change. Emerging technologies such as virtual reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation are all becoming integral to the management of the customer experience. In addition to the need to use these new technologies, the customer service process is blending with marketing and sales. All customer-facing interactions are becoming centrally coordinated, leading to enormous changes in the career op opportunities available to those who work in BPO organizations. Contact centers are creating career paths for data analysts and social media marketing specialists. They're no longer just warehouses full of people on the phone handling complaining customers. Governments have often focused on the ability of trade promotion bodies to create jobs. They should still be involved in the broad job creation environment through the use of policy to encourage investment in emerging technologies and services, but they must break away from this mindset that focuses on contact centers and thousands of agent jobs as the answer to unemployment. They can be responsible for investment that creates big data analysis centers or centers of excellence in artificial intelligence research. Regions with expertise in customer service should be able to develop new areas of excellence, such as social media marketing and social sales. These are exciting times for anyone involved in planning CX strategy, but I fear that many regions who desperately need investment from companies planning interesting projects are being let down by trade associations stuck in the past and bickering with their rivals or critics. It's time to move on and accept that CX is the strategic core of companies of the future, and we are right at the heart of driving this change.